All right, so we go from a 10-game slate to a four-game slate on Thursday. Uh, this one's kind of interesting, at least right now. Not a lot of standout plays. I kind of hope that that holds and there's no, like, clear, clear plays, kind of like we had last night. I prefer slates like this where it's a bit more wide open as opposed to last night where there's a few pretty obvious uh, plays, in my opinion. But, um, yeah, before we talk about this slate, if you guys are new, my name is DK, uh, and we'll be talking about, again, the DFS slate tonight. Um, I also make content for prize picks. Uh, prize picks, they're the sponsor of the video. You can use the code DKDFS for 100% match up to $100. As far as prize picks plays go, went for me last night. So, what? I think I went five, uh, two, five and two, but also I had DeRozan get injured, which is like, what can you do about that? But I did not profit. Um, every miss that I had, I had just paired um, with like, Every, every slip that I had had one of my misses in there, so just kind of unfortunate that that happened. But uh, Bam and Abayo sold the ladder. Uh, that was really tilting. I was looking like I had a chance, and he did just nothing the last, like, five minutes. But, um, yeah, I'll look Ice Picks video up after this, so make sure to check that one out. And, uh, all right, let's recap uh, last night for DFS. So, last night was a great night, and once again, I cost myself a takedown because I made a pivot from... Um, Tobias Harris to Bogdanovich. Um, and the reason I was debating it, because I was like, all right, I already have Maxi, I already have Melton. I was like, do I want Tobias to? I thought about it, I was, I was thinking, okay, Bogdanovich got ruled in late. No one's going to play him. I'm going to go back to the well of Bogdanovich after he was like 60% uh, last late. And no one played him. And Bogdanovich had like one fancy point and a half. Luckily, he's salvaged. But here, I'll get out of the way so you guys can see. So that was that was your typical like late season NBA slate, which I actually prefer. Just a lot of chaos, a lot of late news that we weren't expecting. You know, we got the Harden news. You know, before lock, we got the Raptors news. I believe right after lock, with all those guys being ruled out. So Boucher and Barton become became really good values. I luckily avoided Barton, but he was massive chalk and high stakes, as he should have been. He was a good value. Um, he was just awful. He got the start and just didn't do anything. So I honestly just got lucky with that. Sometimes that's just the way it goes. Because, like, Barton was not a bad play. Like, you can't say, like, if anyone tried to say, like, oh, Barton was a bad play because he only went for, like, single to defense points. Like, no, you're wrong. Like, he was a phenomenal play. I just played Boucher over him. Um, and Boucher uh, went off. Uh, went for 27 fancy points. I went to Anthony Davis as a contrarian spend up over Damian Lillard. Lillard ended up outscoring him, but because I went to AD, I was able to get to both Melton and Sharp, which was the big reason why I made money last night. Deontay Melton at 12% going for 45, and Shaden Sharp at only 20% ownership going for 50. Like, what is that from Shaden Sharp? But also, again, this is what I'm talking about with the chaos, right? Everyone expected Cam Reddish to start. I did too, because I had Cam Reddish as one of my core plays. I thought he was one of the best values. Once he didn't start, I was like, all right, well, we got to move some stuff around, right? Um, and then I had Denny in the early game. He was, uh, solid for sure. If you played Porzingis, let me just tell you, you deserve all the money last. A low owned Porzingis was a phenomenal play. He was absolutely breaking the slate. That's a foul trouble to bail out the faders, which was me. I was a fader. I looked at that ownership at lock. I was like, wow, Porzingis is a phenomenal play. So if you play Kristaps Porzingis, you should actually be a millionaire after last night. You got incredible. Incredibly unlucky. I would be so, so incredibly mad if I had Porzingis uh, and, and that happened with a massive foul trouble and massive blowout uh, to bail out the faders. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's the recap. Uh, won $500, 5X night. I would have taken down this tournament had I kept Tobias Harris, who won for 43. I ended up going to Bogdanovich, who won for 23. So, I mean, it is what it is. But um, yeah, hope you guys had a good night. Uh, that was a stressful one for sure. But hey, again, I think the biggest edge in mbdfs is when we have slates like this when you just have chaos right a lot of stuff unexpected um like people fell asleep at the wheel and kept cam reddish like in this tournament reddish was still 20 plus percent coming off the bench what i thought was just not a good play right uh, especially at that ownership coming off the bench but um yeah so that's the recap of everything and uh let's talk about this four game slate so we'll start off with the knicks and the magic so on the Knicks side, I, I like Randall and I like Brunson. I think they're those are your top plays for the Knicks. I expect, you know, 35 to 40 minutes for both. Randall's been very up and down. If you look at the last five games, 52, 43, 35, 65, and 36 fantasy points. 
Jalen Brunson, uh, but, a, but a little bit more consistent, but still a couple duds in there. I guess this game, I think he got injured or so. I don't know what happened at that game. But um, I think factoring in price, I would say Brunson probably a little bit safer to get to at 7-8. But Randall, still a good option at the top as well. Um, as far as the rest of the Knicks go, so this is where it gets kind of tricky for me. RJ Barrett, 6K. I mean, his minutes just fluctuate, right? There's games where he will not close and he'll play 25 minutes. And those games like last, last game against Miami where he'll close, and he'll play like 36 minutes. So I like this ceiling on Barrett. If you told me he played mid-30s minutes, I would be all about it. If you told me he played 25 minutes, I'd say no way. So there's going to be a few guys like this uh, that, you know, the minutes can fluctuate. But if you get the Barrett game where he pushes for, again, mid-30s minutes, I think he is definitely too cheap. Josh Hart is 5.9K. I would say he's your safer bet. So he's probably not going to kill you. He'll play low 30s minutes. He can still have a ceiling game. We saw the, you know, a couple pop-off games from Josh Hart. So he's definitely the much safer play, in my opinion, to Barrett. Well, Barrett more the boomer bust option where you just like, you don't know what you're going to get minutes-wise from him. The rest of the Knicks, we kind of have to talk through all these teams on a small slate, like all their, you know, just rotation guys, just because it's, again, four-game slate. I may know quickly at 5.8, I would say is a bit too expensive. Now, can he still have a good game off the bench? Yes, but I probably won't be going there. You're going to get Robinson. You're going to get Hartenstein splitting the center position. I think both are solid values. Um, Robinson's been playing mid-20s minutes uh, over the last few games. Isaiah Hartenstein's been playing around 20 minutes. Um, had a bad game last game, but a sub-4K. Normally not the not a bad point for minute guy. So I think both Nick centers are solid values here. The rest, I mean, Quentin Grimes obviously going to play 20-ish minutes. He's not very productive. I mean, he did a really good shooting game last game, but that's a bit of an outlier performance. However, he's only 3.4K, so he's playable, I guess. I don't think I would get to anyone else. I mean, you'll see a little bit of uh, Obi Toppin. He'll back up uh, Randall. I mean, I guess, I guess if you needed someone in the flat minute price, you can play Toppin, but you're not going to get more than 10 to 12 minutes unless something really weird happens. All right, so now talk through the magic. I'm not the best matchup here for the Magic, but I think like all the main guys look decent, right? Like it, this is the tough part I have about the Orlando Magic right now is with Bancaro and Fultz and Carter and Franz. I don't know. I, when when no one's like clearly mispriced, I have a tough time picking between these guys. But Bancaro should see mid 30s minutes. Marco Fultz, I expect to see low to mid 30s. Wanda Carter Jr. should see low 30s. Um, he's probably the guy at the highest floor, I would say. Franz Wagner, six point six. He's had a couple big games of late. Normally, though, he hovers around 30-ish fancy points. So, like, I, all four of those guys look good, but, like, I wouldn't say there's one priority here for the Magic. Well, Anthony's 5'6". He'll play a little bit more without Jalen Suggs. Um, he's been playing, you know, 28 to 30 minutes off the bench. I think he's still a little bit too cheap there. As far as the rest of the Magic goes, be careful with Gary Harris. I know he had like just a career game last game, shooting 7 of 10 and going for two blocks and two, two steals. That's not going to happen again. Most of the time, he's going to play mid-20s minutes. Most of the time, he's going to give you like 10 to 15 fancy points. If he shoots well, he can go for 20-plus, but 35 is like very clearly an outlier performance. Um, you had been seeing Gogo Bataze play the backup five. However, last game, they went back to Mo Wagner. Now, I'm not sure if they do that again, but if you told me 100% convinced, or if you told me 100% that Mo Wagner was going to play the backup five tonight and play like 15 minutes, I think he'd be a pretty solid value play. I'm just a little bit worried that, you know, he could get a DNP that can go back to Gogo Bataze. Um, Caleb Houston will see some rotation mats, but he's just horrific. Uh, I am not going there. Um, you might see a little bit of Kevin Harris. He's also horrific. I am not going there. Uh, my boy, Bull Bull, might see a little bit uh, of minutes as well, but not enough right now. So, yeah, that's the magic. Let's move on to Cleveland and Brooklyn. So, for Cleveland, um, I like the price points on both guards here in Mitchell and Garland. I think both are a little bit too cheap. 8.4K for Mitchell. That just stands out. I know he's been kind of quiet of late, but you're going to see in a competitive game close to 40 minutes of Mitchell. Same thing for Darius Garland, 7-2. Um, neither have really had, like, the, the big pop-off games of late. You know, you have seen Levert play well off the bench. You've seen... You know, Rubio, Chetty give them solid minutes, but I still like, again, the price points on both Mitchell and Garland. I think Mobley's a little bit pricey with Jared Allen back, but that doesn't mean he can't get there. He had a bad game last game, but um, still a guy that, that can provide that ceiling. Jared Allen, revenge game narrative, and his first game back played 35 minutes. I think factoring in price, I prefer Allen to Mobley, but I also think Allen will be more popular than Mobley. Now, we mentioned Karis Levert, right? He's just played, he's been playing really, really well off the bench. Um, 
he's been playing, you know, 25 to 30 minutes. The price point feels like a lot, but he still continues to get it done with a fully healthy team. Um, so I kind of don't know what to do with Levert right now. We've seen a lot of times, you know, throughout the year where one of Mitchell or Garland's out, we all jam Levert and he's just awful. But now all of a sudden, fully healthy team, he's just like smashing off the bench. So like, that's a tricky one. I, I don't think he's going to continue to do that. But also, I've been saying the same thing about Austin Reeves. And you saw what Austin Reeves did last night, too. So, yeah, uh, Levert is, is certainly in play. Chetty Osman, you know, even with a fully healthy team, played 23 minutes last game, had a nice game. He's not a bad point per minute guy. A little bit of interest in him. Okoro is awful point per minute, but he'll start probably by mid-20s minutes. And then you'll get Ricky Rubio rounding out the rotation, probably playing somewhere around 20 minutes. I think he's a solid value play just because he'll be productive when he's on the court. So um, that's the Cavs. Let's move on to Brooklyn. Tough, tough matchup here for the Nets. But the positive is they're playing their main guys a lot. Dinwiddie, Bridges. These guys should see close to 40 minutes each. Um, Bridges has been a little bit quiet of late, but the price point has dropped on him to 7.4K. So I like the two main guys here for the Nets. Neither of them are guys I'm going to prioritize, though. I'm going to say, say that a lot because, again, there's not a lot of standout plays on this slate. Nick Claxton should see around 30 minutes. Um, I think he's reasonable. Cam Johnson, 6'5", feels like a little bit pricey, but he'll play mid-30s minutes. You'll get Dorian Finney-Smith, Royce O'Neal kind of splitting the power forward position. Uh, the minutes have a takedown a little bit on Dorian Finney-Smith, uh, but he did get a little bit banged up last game. Royce O'Neal um, will play probably whatever Dorian Finney-Smith doesn't play. So they're both fine. I think if Dorian Finney-Smith starts and plays, you know, 25 to 30 minutes. I think factory and price, I'd prefer him slightly. You just saw like an absolute massive game from Dayron Sharp off the bench last game out of nowhere, going for 40 plus fancy points in 20 minutes. I don't know what to make of that. Um, I don't think that's going to happen again. Um, I don't even, I'm not even convinced he'll be in the rotation again. So that was just a weird one. Seth Curry, 3.3K minutes. I mean, he'll probably see on average 15 to 20 minutes. He's cheap. Joe Harris is 3-4. He'll probably see somewhere around the same minutes. So those guys are viable dart throws. All right, Charlotte and New Orleans. This would be probably my favorite game to target. On the Charlotte side, Rogier Oubre, here's the thing. These guys are going to play high 30s minutes. They're going to get a lot of shots up, and this is a decent matchup. So I have interest in both. I think factoring in price, I would prefer Rogier, but Oubre's got the nice eligibility shooting guard small forward. Peach of Washington had a really quiet game last game, but did play 36 minutes. He will play a little bit of the backup five as well. Um, I think he's a nice bounce back candidate here. Gordon Hayward's 5'7". I expect low 30s minutes from him. I think he's a pretty safe play. Um, you'll get Richards and Kai Jones splitting the center position. Richards, 5K, had a big game in 26 minutes last game. Kai Jones will play some backup five. He played 16 minutes. He's reasonable again. And then you will get a little bit of Peach of Washington at the five. Dennis Smith Jr., 5.1. I expect around 30 minutes from him. Another relatively safe play. I think he's like pretty similar to a guy like Gordon Hayward. I don't think it to anyone else, though. Like Svima Kailuk or JT Thor. Like I don't, I don't think I'm going to mess with that. On the Pelican side, so Ingram up to 9K. Still playable, and I really like the matchup. But I would say he's not a must play for me. Um, but still a guy you can get to. CJ at 8.1 might be a little bit easier to get to at 8.1K. Um, but again, I think both the main guys look good. And then it's JV. Here's the thing, right? The minutes were ticked up for him of late. Uh, it was really tilting last late because he was chalky. And he just played the entire fourth quarter in like a 50-point blowout. I just, I, I want to run good like that one time. But um, yeah, it's an absolutely amazing matchup. If you told me JV played 30 plus minutes again, he would be in my lineup. There's just... Not a guarantee, right? I think he only played, I want to say 12 or 13 first half minutes last game. Um, so, like, again, if he struggles or if Nance plays well, they will limit his minutes. But if you told me, again, he plays 33, 34 minutes, he probably will break the slate. Uh, Murphy, Herb Jones, these guys should see a lot of run. They're more just like filler plays. Murphy been a little bit quiet of late, but that should keep his ownership down. Um, Herb Jones is 5'9". Again, he'll play 30-ish minutes. They're both reasonable. Josh Richardson will see minutes off the bench. Most likely somewhere in the neighborhood of around the like 20-ish minutes. We've seen them fluctuate a bit. 28, then 17, then 26, and 17, then 25. Um, 25, this game was a blowout, though. Um, so he's playable. Larry Nance. So if you fade JV, 
you can look at Larry Nance, right? If you think JV gets limited minutes, then it's most likely Nance that benefits because we haven't seen Jackson Hayes in this rotation in competitive games. So Nance, I know he's been banged up. I know he hasn't been playing the best, but he's cheap in a great matchup. I think he's an interesting value. And then you'll get Najee Marshall in the rotation as well. Probably seeing 15 to 18 minutes. He's a fine uh, value play. And finally, the Thunder and the Clippers. Thunder on a small slate, man. Come on. I don't want to talk about the rotation, all right? I don't want to. Um, we'll start at the top, the easy easy guys to talk about. SGA, he's going to play mid to high 30s minutes. Um, revenge spot, feels a little bit too cheap. Giddy, Jalen Williams, both feel priced about right. Giddy's minutes have been ticking down a little bit of late at 7-7. Jalen Williams, the guard, um, you know, has still shown a ceiling. Um, I think he's just like a fine filler play. I'm um, not going to prioritize him, but he can still have good games with a fully healthy team. Lou Dort's 5-4. His minutes have been you know, consistently 30-plus. I think he's a relatively safe option. Isaiah Joe, the one guy I'm confident will see minutes off the bench, probably see mid-20s minutes if he makes his shots. Uh, he can get there. If he struggles with the shots, he can hurt you. The rest of this rotation is where it's just like, I have no idea, man. I, I literally don't. The big Jalen Williams got massive foul trouble last game. Only played 11 minutes, got benched. Um... If he's, if he's the one that starts, he's probably the big that I feel the best about, but you, you just don't know, right? Dario Saric, last game, played 10 minutes. Olivier Saar had been out of the rotation. They dusted him off and played 19 minutes. You got, uh, I think, JRE played a couple minutes, uh, and then you got Usman Jane playing. Uh, last, last game, JRE did not play, but he had played previous to that. Usman Jane played eight minutes. So just like, I, I don't, I have no idea. If someone tells you they know what's going to happen with the big rotation for the Thunder, they're just flat out lying to you. So that's all I'm going to say. Um, it's really simple as that. If you want to play one of these guys off the bench and hope they just get extended or the big Jalen Williams gets benched again, be my guest. Uh, I probably just won't be messing with it. Uh, like Lindy Waters, Aaron Wiggins. They're just dart throws. I mean, you did see 20 minutes for Aaron Wiggins off the bench last game, but he could also DNP and I wouldn't be shocked. So... It's just not fun. It's not fun to talk about the Thunder on a small slate. Finally, the Clippers. Pretty interesting team to talk about. Definitely one of my favorite teams to, to target here with no Paul George and no Norman Powell. I think Kawhi and Westbrook stand out as two of the better spend-ups in the slate. Kawhi Leonard should be the clear go-to guy in a pretty good matchup. Should pick close to 40 minutes. And Russell Westbrook without Paul George, I'm now much more confident with his minutes. I expect him to play mid-30s minutes, be the number two offensively. So I like Westbrook. I like Kawhi. You're going to get Zubach and Plumlee playing majority of the center minutes. Zubach got in random massive foul trouble last game, but before that, he had been smashing. Plumlee's cheap. Um, he'll probably play whatever Zubach does not play. You might see again a little bit of small ball five. Starting lineup out Paul George. If I had to guess, I would say they go Eric Gordon. So I think the starting lineup would be Westbrook, Gordon, Kawhi, Marcus Morris, and Zubach. That would be my guess. I, they could go to man, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be Eric Gordon. If it is Gordon at a 5-3, he's playable. Again, it, it comes down to whether or not he can make his shots. He's not going to do a ton of the peripheral stats. And also, the price is not super cheap. Terrence Mann should play more off the bench. But again, he got the price hike to 4.9K. So that's not great. Marcus Morris, 4-7. He's been awful, but he'll probably play around 30 minutes. Um, and then Nick Batum might play a little bit more at 3.8K. He played 24 minutes last game. He's a guy that if they close small, he can play like small ball 5. And then you might get one of like Bones Highland or Robert Covington dusted off with Paul George out. So if you want to take a dart, one of those guys, you can. But again, they have Bones Highland at 4K. Like, why is Bones 4K? Why is he 4K? He hasn't played a game in like three weeks and he's $4,000. I don't make it make sense. But all right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for the Clippers. And that's going to do it for the video as well. So if you have been enjoying the content, just make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, keep it out for the prize picks video. And we'll see you all in the next one.